Now you could actually use, you know, two different colors of paint. And it's best if you use a couple different colors anyway. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Now I'm gonna paint a little, a couple of the vines. Those were the big leaves. So I'm gonna paint a couple of the vines. To do the vines, I need to use a smaller brush. That was a size three, round. So I'm gonna go to a size zero and use a little bit thicker paint to paint the vines here. And it's much darker. It's the same, the same, um, this is orchid, or no, sorry, this is cymbidium. It's cymbidium petal dust, and it's the same petal dust, but look how it looks darker. Because I'm not using as much vodka liquid, so it looks darker. Okay. I also have a green over here. I think that's not, that's the brown. Where's the green? That's it. You laid a green somewhere. So I can take, this is the food color now. Now the food color is translucent. It's very transparent. When you paint with this, so we'll go back to our test cookie. When you paint with this guy, it's gonna be see-through. Barely see-through when you paint with it. So you can really see through it. I actually don't really care for that look. However, what I do do is I always, I personally always use a little bit of white. So you just take the white and I add a little bit of white to all my, to all my colors. Okay, so if you add just a little bit of white to these, now it turns a little opaque. And granted, it's a little lighter now too. Here you can see, kind of see the cookie through it. And here you get a much prettier paint. And you see the difference between those two. Okay, so that's with no white and that's with white. So here I'm gonna go ahead and take, and you can do the same thing with this. You can really thin it down so you end up with two different colors. This isn't really gonna go on this cookie. Let's get another here. I'll get this one for this green. We'll do it on this. Now this is marzipan, that's fondant. This is marzipan, and you can see that it takes the paint just as nicely. And if I add even more vodka to it and thin it down, it will do the same thing that the um, petal dust does, and that's where it'll go into the recesses of the design. It'll go down into those cracks and crevices, and you'll end up with a darker darker down below. If you can see that. Now you can come back with that darker green too and you can just touch it up in places to really highlight it. See I can take that dark and it's kind of nice because be since the design is raised it really guides your brush. So you really, it's almost like painting by braille. You can really, uh, it just, the raised design kind of guides your brush so your hand doesn't have to be that steady for you to do it. Now, if you do have a problem um, steadying your hand, notice I have my, my forearm against the table or you can actually put your finger on your thumb here and put this arm on the table to help paint, to help steady yourself, okay? So if you're a little shaky, which I am, you know, there was ways to get around and still be able to paint. The only thing I haven't figured out is the eyesight thing because I, I can't see it either. This is actually quite relaxing and these cookies just come out beautiful. They don't take that long to do. They go really fast. Now I'm using a tiny brush, but if you use like a really big brush, they go pretty fast. My co-workers are like, oh, they're so pretty. Oh, we don't want to eat it, but they do. They grab them and they scarf them down their, their face. So, because I like them. They're, I make, um, I like anise because it's, that's the, uh, the licorice flavored spring of the cookies. That's traditional. But I also make the House in the Hill has a recipe too that is fabulous. And, it, and she does it with orange. She does, she has one that's orange. 
and they love that one too so 